1998 at a hotel in Rutland that I'd be here again more than 20 years later. But in a way it makes sense. Both my grandparents grew apples in central Massachusetts and my great-grandfather grew apples in Ghent, New York. And uh, little, uh, unbeknownst to me at the time when I wrote my two books about apples, I later discovered that he also wrote a book called The Apple King of Fruits more than a century before I wrote mine. So uh, I guess I've got uh, apples in my, in my past and cider in my veins. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, our association and what we're seeing at the moment as a prelude to where I see us heading next. Um, some of you may know this history, but our association goes back to 1935. And uh, Casey Darrow's great-grandfather was one of the founders of the New England Apple Association. I came on board in 1996, and uh, during my tenure with the association, we've seen uh, several shifts in the New England Apple industry. Um, the logic early on for our first several decades was uh, simply that all the wholesale growers contributed a, a per box assessment to fund the marketing efforts. And we are about marketing and education. And uh, that made sense for a long time. In the case of my grandparents, one grew his apples and shipped them to Springfield, Mass, and one brought his to Providence, Rhode Island. End of story. No marketing, no pick your own. <laughs> you just grew your apples. Well, as everyone in this room knows, that has changed significantly. And as a result of that, in uh, 2001, recognizing the way the industry was changing, we created a retail membership so that orchards of any size could uh, reap some of the benefits of our promotional efforts. And it works both ways because everything we do is benefiting all the orchards, large and small. So that's become a significant part of our organization. It's reflected in our board of directors. We now have several on the board who are uh, just working in retail. And the year after that, we began uh, staffing a booth at the Eastern States Exposition. Uh, we're in the Massachusetts building because our office is in Massachusetts but we're able to promote the entire uh, association. And if you know anything about the Big E, it's the largest fair in New England. This year it had a record 1.6 million visitors over 17 days, and they're from all over the Northeast. So uh, even our member, uh, our board member from Connecticut considers it our best promotion of the year. We meet a lot of people and talk a lot about apples and sell a lot of apples, and. Uh, it's a very good promotion and it raises money to supplement our marketing efforts. We have uh, had a very good website over the years and it was uh, progressing. We would increase by about 20% every year. But a year ago at this time, we made a decision that we really needed to ramp it up and uh, get the newest generation up to a, a, a new level. And our board committed $12,000 at the time to update uh, the website. And uh, it's brilliant. We're still uh, doing some of the tweaking. We're still adding some things. But it came out in July, and uh, it does a marvelous job. We are the resource for people looking about New England apples. If you're interested in how apples are grown, we take you through it season by season. If you want to know about the nutritional aspects of apples, it's on our website. If you want recipes for any meal, we have dozens of them on our website. If you want to see videos about how to make an apple pie or prune or pollination or IPM, we have those on our website. And even at this time of year, we're getting about 70,000 impressions a month. And this is still early on. But of course, What's going to be of most interest to you are the people who come to the website looking for orchards or apples. And we have an apple finder with more than 130 varieties listed. And we have uh, close to 100 orchards. And uh, the nice thing about it is if you're looking for an unusual variety, if you're looking for a wealthier Tolman Sweet, for example, you can look up that apple and you will not only find a photo and description of it, 
you'll see that Chapin Orchard grows them. So you can find that apple. Now that's true also for uh, Cortland's and Macintosh as well, but whatever apples you grow can be listed on that site. You control your own listing, so most of our orchards today have other produce. They may have berries, they may have fruits and vegetables, and that's included in your listing, and we also link to your own website. Um, we feature recipes from orchards, and if you have been to the site, you would know uh, Ron Hackett's favorite cookies. <laughs> because we published a recipe of them and featured a photo of him at the orchard. For the past 10 years, every week from mid-August through November, I publish a blog that comes out before the weekend. And it has photographs of orchards. It usually has recipes. It has news about the current crop. And uh, it's very popular. After 10 years, you can imagine we have quite a readership and we make sure that that gets out uh, before the weekend when people are making their plans. So uh, how do you get on that site? By becoming a basic member of the association. And you can be on the website for as little as $250 a year or $20 a month. And if all we did was the website, in my opinion, that's a real bargain when you compare that to some of the other marketing costs that you accrue. But having said that, we do a lot more than that. For example, we created these uh, rack cards for the orchard for 14 different varieties. They're beautiful, they have a photo of the orchard, uh, of the apple and a description of it, a little bit about its history. Our members just get a, a supply of these and if they run out, then we'll replace them. We've done a calendar annually since uh, 2012 and it keeps apples in front of consumers 365 days a year on their office walls and their kitchens. And it, uh, it not only has an orchard photograph, but each month features an apple. There's health information at the bottom. And on the back, there's a listing with contact information and website addresses of all our member orchards. And if you're a member, you get a supply of these as well. Some people sell them to recoup some of their membership. Some people give them out to friends and customers. But uh, you just, in September, a supply of those appears at your door. I have some of those here today, and you're all welcome to take, a, take one home with you. Uh, if anybody signs up today, I can give you the full 15 for the basic membership. Um, I've also uh, written a couple of books over the last few years about apples. The first one is America's Apple. Uh, I visited more than 50 orchards from across the country. So this looks at how apples are grown, packed, eaten uh, across the United States. But it has uh, quite a New England flair, as you can imagine, and has photographs of Barney Hodges Jr. and Evan Darrow in it. And uh, the more recent one is Apples of New England, which is a regional history and guide. And uh, that includes a section, for example, on the Shoreham Co-op. So Vermont has always been uh, central to our mission as a regional organization. And we encourage you to promote your orchard. We encourage you to use the Vermont brand, just as we do in Maine and Massachusetts. We need all the marketing tools uh, we, can, we can employ. But we are able, because of our size and our expanse, we're able to do some things in addition uh, to what the states can do and to what individual orchards can do. And uh, that's where I think we can be valuable. And this website is clearly an example of that. We've had very good working relationships with the state organizations. And uh, typically, we've received contributions from the Connecticut fruit growers and. New Hampshire fruit growers, Rhode Island fruit growers. And I mention this now because the Maine Pomological Society at its meeting last month has uh, come to us and asked us to uh, see if we can develop a program with them to help them with their marketing efforts. Because we do have the expertise and the experience and, uh, and they have some money to put toward marketing but they don't really have enough to <coughs> develop a program and uh, we're going to be exploring ways to um, see how we can work with their state association to, to strengthen those orchards in Maine. 
So maybe there are opportunities to do something like that here in uh, Vermont. That's you know a decision for you folks to make. But um, as we look at the current year, uh, we're emphasizing a few things. One has been there all along, but we're putting extra emphasis on it, and that's on variety and flavor. And for all the detractors about Macintosh, when you think about apple flavor, whether it's uh, a gum or a shampoo or anything else, you're thinking about Macintosh. And, um, and a lot of the varieties that we grow in smaller amounts, like uh, a Tolman Sweet or a Wealthy or a Northern Spy, we know that they're not commercially viable for any number of reasons. Maybe they don't travel well. Maybe they're susceptible to pests. But on a small scale, many of these are still great apples and really add a lot to the consumer's experience and our understanding of this magnificent fruit. So uh, that's something that we can do and do very well here in New England. I think it's particularly important now because many of the imports that are coming in, in my opinion, they're just sweet. They're just, um, they're bubblegum apples. There's no real apple flavor. The emphasis is on sweetness. They have to be pretty hard in order to travel well and store well. So I think that flavor and um, variety continue to be things that we need to stress. Uh, another is the experience of going to the orchard. And this is a place where, again, for all the virtue of the state identity, I think consumers are less and less concerned with state borders these days. They want a good experience. They want to know that if they go to a place, they want to know if they can get lunch. They want to know if they can find that heirloom they're looking for. They want to know if it's a beautiful spot and how to find it. So uh, that experience that we can give consumers here in New England is not easily replicated in some of the bigger apple, apple growing regions of the country. And it's something that I think we need to still continue to emphasize. And the other place that we're looking at that relates very closely to the flavor and variety issue is cider in general and hard cider in particular. And we know that volume-wise these are still relatively small, but they're also growing leaps and bounds. And it's another place where we can, um, we can provide a real boost. Uh, the hard cider market is still pretty grassroots and decentralized. There is no uh, place right now where hard cider producers or fresh cider producers can get their products listed and our website is the perfect vehicle for that and one of our goals for the coming year is to uh, look at ways to encourage cider producers to get on the website and allow us to put our marketing uh, strength on, on their behalf. We're looking at a couple of ideas around that such as a cider trail that uh, would probably involve more than one state. We'll start with a pilot program and we're thinking probably Massachusetts and Vermont. I don't know if most of you are aware, but there's an event in uh, Western Massachusetts called Franklin County Cider Days. It's been, it's more than 25 years old now. It attracts cider aficionados and producers from all over the country. The first weekend in November, there are workshops and tastings. It's very popular. So we're working with the Chamber of Commerce in Greenfield, where it's uh, located, um, to begin exploring this idea of some type of uh, tour that we could arrange that would take people from uh, cidery to cidery and maybe orchard to orchard. We're still looking at the parameters of this. Um, but we think it's a way to really um, build on this growing momentum that we have for cider, but also draw attention to the orchards that we already have. So those are some of the things that we're working on. Um, we're very excited, we're lean and mean. There's just two of us and we're both part-time contractors. The, we work out of an office out of our home. We're even married to each other. <laughs> so uh, there's no big overhead. Uh, the money that comes to us goes directly into marketing and promotion. And uh, in the best of circumstances, we certainly can't compete with uh, you know, the big dollars from some of the other states. And uh, 
we have seen this acceleration in the, um, the loss of wholesale and most painfully here in Vermont is Sentinel Pine. That was a big hit for the, for the region when it comes to wholesale apples. So uh, we need to find new and better ways to sustain this effort. So um, that's partly why I'm here, is to encourage you to take a hard look at membership, primarily for your own benefit, but also as a way to support this regional effort because the last thing I'm going to end on is uh, Cosmic Crisp. Because <laughs> that's what we're hearing about more and more. And I think that the uh, pieces I outlined earlier are our best response, flavor and variety, the orchard experience, looking at uh, cider. But having said that, um, we did weather Sweet Tango. Um, you know, three or four years ago, the New Yorker and NPR, everybody was putting out stories about Sweet Tango. And then a couple of years later, it was Snapdragon and Ruby Frost. And everybody wants that new Honey Crisp. And uh, I've not tasted a Cosmic Crisp, but I've talked to people who have, and they've said it's a good apple, but it's not Honey Crisp. However, having said that, so much money has been invested in planting trees and setting aside marketing funds. It is gonna be a tidal wave at first. And I think that, uh, I think that we will be fine in the long run, but in the short term, it's another reason that we need to do everything we can to pool our resources and uh, put our best foot forward because what we have here is a great industry and a great product, and uh, we're here to do whatever we can to help promote it. Thank you. just kind of 